Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get hired at a high paying remote job even if you do not have a college degree or if you have the wrong college degree. So if you're applying for a job where it asks you to have a degree in computer science and you have a degree in English, I'm gonna show you how to get around both of those restrictions. And I'm also gonna show you how exactly to prepare yourself for the job, prepare yourself for the interview so that you know what you're talking about, and also how to prepare your resume in such a way that it doesn't just get stopped because you don't have the college education. I'm gonna show you all of that. Right now I'm staying in a little cabin in the mountains in Tennessee. I'm standing on the deck of the cabin. You can see the view behind me is absolutely incredible, which is one of the big benefits to being able to work remote is that you can travel wherever and whenever you want. I have a Wi-Fi connection in the cabin, so it's no problem for me to come out here for a week or two weeks or a month or whatever I want and just work from the cabin here. It's pretty nice. It's a nice break from all the craziness that's going on in the world right now. But anyway, um, I want to talk about how to get a remote job even if you don't have a college education. And the, the big point of this is that having a college degree really doesn't matter. If you're applying for a job, if you're working at a job, the fact that you have a degree hanging on your wall really does not mean that you're any better at doing that job than anybody who doesn't have that degree hanging on their wall. The college degree used to represent that you knew something that other people don't, but more and more as time goes on that's getting to be no longer the case because college does not really teach you relevant job skills in most cases, and even if it did teach you those relevant job skills, somebody who does not have a college degree could easily learn those same skills without going to college. They could learn them in other ways. And companies are catching on to this. You notice that there are fewer job descriptions as time goes on where they ask for a college degree, whereas it used to be that every white collar job asked for a college degree. Now I'm seeing it less and less and less as time goes on because College itself, the quality of a college education is getting lower and lower. College is becoming more and more meaningless over time. And at the same time as college is becoming more meaningless, there are more and more alternatives where you can learn the same material, the same job skills better without having to go to college. So not having a college degree or having the wrong college degree really shouldn't hold you back in any way because it's not the degree that matters, it's the skills that matter. And you can gain those skills in other ways and much more cost-effective ways than going to college. And it's another thing that companies are gonna start recognizing is that college is not a very good deal economically. And so if you're going to college these days, you're probably making kind of a bad decision. And somebody who did not go to college, but learned the same skills for a fraction of the price, who do you think looks smarter between the person who paid $50,000 to learn some skills or the person that learned the same skills for maybe a couple hundred dollars online? Who looks smarter in that scenario? If it was me, if I was the hiring manager, uh, I would favor the person who did not go to college because that person made a better decision about their education. And by the way, if you did go to college and you're watching this, I'm not trying to insult you. I mean, I went to college too. I have both a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. But the more experience I gain, the more I realize that those degrees were not really a very good use of my time and money. Anyway, so I'm not trying to rant about college, but the point is that the diploma doesn't matter. What matters is that you have the skills. Now, in spite of everything I just said, I realize that there are still some job descriptions that ask you to have a degree. Maybe they'll ask you to have a bachelor's degree. Maybe they'll ask you to have a degree in a specific field. And so let's go a little bit into why companies ask for the degree. They don't ask for the degree because they really think that that means that you're gonna be able to perform better. In most cases, companies will ask for a degree either because it's just a habit, that they've been doing that for a long time, they've never bothered to even question it, or as a way of filtering applications. So if a company puts a job description out and gets a thousand applications for the same job, then how do you think they're gonna go through those thousand applications? Well, that's a giant pain, right? They can't even consider a thousand applications, much less read over all of them and interview all of them, right? So they need some way of cutting down that number of applications. And one of the easiest ways to do that is just say, okay, you have to have a bachelor's degree in order to be considered. 
right? That way they can cut out a whole bunch of their applications and they have less work to do in sifting through those applications. And if that's your situation, if you're trying to find a job where they're using that as a filtering mechanism, well, the, the job itself is, is kind of difficult, right? You have this massive amount of people that are applying for a small amount of jobs. That's kind of the problem a lot more than the college degree itself is. But, so that's kind of an indication that that job field is gonna be pretty difficult to get even if you have a college degree. But if you wanna continue uh, pursuing that particular job, I'm still gonna tell you how to get around the degree requirement. So like I said, if you wanna get hired, you have to have the skills. And the, the amount of pay that you get, the amount of competition that you have to compete with in order to get the job, the amount of benefits, basically everything about the job uh, will be determined by what skills you have. Now, the good news is this. It's 2020, we have the internet, and you can teach yourself just about anything you could possibly want to learn on the internet. So what that means is that any skills that you don't have right now, you can learn. So even a high paying job that seems completely out of your league, you can teach yourself all of the skills that you don't know right now. So if you're not qualified right now, you can teach yourself those skills and be qualified in the near future. Okay, so let me give you a few resources where you can teach yourself these skills. Now, this is going to depend on what particular job field you're trying to get into. And, you know, that's a whole nother can of beans, figuring out which kind of remote job is right for you, which is something I teach my students in my boot camp. But once you've figured out which kind of job is right for you, you got to figure out where you can fill in the skills that you don't already have. A great resource for that is a site called Coursera.org. Coursera.org is a site that hosts a bunch of courses that are actually offered by colleges, by legitimate accredited colleges, including some really big name colleges like Harvard and Stanford and Yale will, will actually offer courses for free on Coursera.org and they have courses in all manner of different subjects. And Coursera, by the way, most of the courses are 100% free. So you don't have to pay anything to take those courses. Another great option is Udemy.com. Udemy is kind of a uh, more independent where people who know a certain subject will create a course. And Udemy is really nice because first, there's a ton of options for just about anything you might wanna learn. There's a whole bunch of options and they all have ratings. It's like Amazon.com where people will, will put their rating and their review of the course so you can figure out which courses are good based on the ratings that other people have given them. And uh, Udemy, you have to pay for the courses usually, but they're cheap. They're usually like $10 each. And then another super awesome resource is right here on YouTube. You can find tutorial videos that will teach you just about anything. If you wanna program in Java, you can learn to program in Java. If you wanna to learn to use Photoshop, you can learn Photoshop. If you wanna learn AdWords, if you wanna learn accounting, just about anything you could possibly think of, there are in detail tutorial videos that you can get for free right here on YouTube. And then if all else fails, if you can't find it anywhere else, then you can always just Google it. There's so many amazing courses, both free and paid on the internet that you can get. And by the way, the paid courses, even if you pay like $2,000 for a course, um, think about what is $2,000 compared to a full college education? It's nothing, right? It's a small fraction of the price. So you can learn all the relevant job skills and that's the first step and the most important step because you can't do the job if you don't know how to do it. You gotta learn the skills first. Now, to get around the resume requirement, this is a super cool little trick that I teach all my bootcamp students. And that is, choose a course on Coursera.org. Remember I told you that Coursera.org are all offered by real legitimate colleges, right? So for example, let's say that you wanna learn digital marketing. Well, you can go on Coursera.org, find a course on digital marketing from let's say the University of Illinois, that's one I found recently, and go ahead and take that course and then on your resume, under your education section, which by the way, I always put last on my resume because it's the least important part of the resume, but under your education section, you just write the program name, the university name, and the date that you finished. So in this case, you would write digital marketing, University of Illinois, January 2020, or whatever the date was that you finished. And then under that, you can write a little bit about the individual skills that you learn. You say, I learned how to do AdWords, I learned how to do retargeting, I learned how to build funnels, you know, whatever. That's just all marketing terms. Don't worry if you don't know what that means. But you write under that uh, 
you write under those details the things that you learn from the course. So think about what that looks like on a resume. You have a general looking course title, the name of a respected university, and you have a date. Nobody knows that it's not a bachelor's degree. You don't write that it's a bachelor's degree. You don't write that it's a online course that you took. You just write the subject, the school, the date, and what you learned. That's it. And so when you send your resume to the company and HR takes a look at it, they see under your education section, they see University of Illinois. They're like, okay, this guy has a college education, pass it on to the hiring manager. Now, I've been on a lot of job interviews, so if you're nervous about, oh, well, the hiring manager is going to call me out, he's going to say, oh, this, this isn't a real education. I've been on a lot of job interviews. Um, I have, you know, I have a, a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. Like I said, I have them both listed on my resume. Not a single time have I ever been asked about my degree. Hiring managers do not care about your degree. They care about what you can do. And if you have learned the things that you need to learn in order to be able to do the job, they do not care about the little details about your education. Now, one little caveat that I'll share about this is that if you're looking through course catalog on Coursera and you see a course from like Harvard University or Stanford University, I would recommend that you do not take that course. The only reason is because when you write Stanford University, on your application, that's something that jumps out, right? If you write University of Illinois, uh, nobody's going to comment about that. But if you went to Stanford, you went to Harvard, you know, people are going to say, oh, you went to Stanford. And they're, they're probably going to ask for details just because it's such an elite institution that, that they might actually ask you about it. So I recommend that you avoid those. But notice what you did here. You actually taught yourself the skills. You actually went out of your way, uh, and without being told to, you taught yourself a new thing. You developed yourself. You uh, created the job skills that you actually needed to learn so that you made yourself qualified for the job, and you listed your education in a way that didn't require any dishonesty. It didn't require you to lie in any way. So you can feel completely good about this, and it'll work in most situations. And what I hope you really got out of this on kind of more deeper level, because I think this is super important for anybody who wants a better life, is that anything that you don't know, you can learn, right? Self-development is something that, that always continues. People think that, oh, well, I learn stuff while I'm in school, and then after I'm, I'm out of the formal education system, then I stop learning. No, anything that you want to be able to do in life you can teach yourself how to do, you can learn. If there's an obstacle in front of you, figure out what you need to get over that obstacle. Getting a remote job is just one example of that. And I don't expect, by the way, I don't expect that getting a remote job is gonna be like the thing that fulfills your life. That's not gonna be the end all be all of your existence. And actually it's something I teach my bootcamp students is, is I, I show you how to figure out what your long-term goals are and how you can find a remote job that's going to be a great stepping stone to that. Like for me, for example, um, in, in starting my business, having a remote job is really helpful for me to start a business because what you find when you're working remote is that if you can put in four hours a day of solid work, then that's a lot more than most office workers. I mean, most people that are sitting in the office are, are probably doing like two or three hours of actual work and the rest of the time they're talking to their friends or they're going out to get coffee or they're just like staring at their email inbox. So if you can get a remote job, you can put in four hours of work. You have the other four hours of the day that you would be stuck in the office. Now you can, you can do whatever you want, plus all the time that you would be stuck in traffic. So it's wonderful if you want to work on something bigger, if you have a grander goal for your life. Well, you can cut the amount of, uh, amount of time that you're wasting in the office in half. You know, that's not even including the time you're spending in traffic. So if you want something that's better in life than what's just handed to you by society, by your parents, by your teachers, whatever, then you can go after it and you can get it. You have more resources at your fingertips now in 2020 than anybody else in the history of the world. And if you really want to get a remote job, you're really serious about this, you really want to put in the effort, and you really want to just get it done, you want to get that remote job as fast as possible, then I want to invite you to look into a boot camp that I'm teaching. It's a four weeks live coaching boot camp where I literally personally coach you from wherever you are now 
usually stuck in an office or, you know, these days a lot of people are unemployed because the people who don't have a remote job, well, the remote job is, is the only job that exists anymore for a lot of people. So whether you, you don't have a job, maybe you got laid off or you're working in a job that, uh, that takes up all your time and you don't have the ability to travel, you don't have the ability to stay with your family as much as you'd like, I'm gonna take you from that situation to finding a full-time remote job. And it's a four-week program where I'm gonna show you, in the first week, I'm gonna show you how to figure out exactly what is the right remote job for you. What is the perfect job that fits in exactly with what your longer-term goals are, with what the trajectory that you would like to, your life to take. I'm gonna show you how to fit the perfect remote job into that. Week two is gonna be all about how to figure out the skills and how to learn those skills so that you are qualified for your ideal remote job. Week three, I'm gonna help you put together the perfect resume and the perfect LinkedIn profile that's gonna get you hired. I'm actually gonna look at your resume. I'm actually gonna help you write it. Literally, I'm, I'm walking you through every step of this. And then week four is how to find all the remote jobs how to apply and how to actually get hired, including a bunch of cool tricks that is going to put your resume on the top of the stack, a bunch of stuff that almost nobody else is doing that's going to make you stand out even in a competitive field. So if that's something that might be of interest to you, you're tired of trying to figure this out all alone, and you'd like me to hold your hand through every step of the process, then, then click the link in the description to find out all about the boot camp. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button, and share this with anybody else who you think it might be helpful to. And of course, if you're interested in the boot camp, then I will see you live very soon.